Number 10 from the 1999 paper 2. An area, area between curves. Although all areas are areas between curves after all, it doesn't matter even if you've got a curve with the x-axis. When you work out an area, <coughs> what you're really doing is you're adding up the areas of thin little strips. The width of each strip is that dx that you have, the thickness of it, and the height of it is going to be given by the y-coordinate of the top and the y-coordinate of the bottom. And the y-coordinate of the top will come from the top function, and the y-coordinate of the bottom will come from the bottom function. But these strips all have to have the same equations for the tops and the bottoms throughout the area you're considering. They can't suddenly switch halfway through. So that with this one, since this question says at the end, find this shaded area, you can't simply start at the beginning and start adding up these little strips. You can't just start at this point here and then keep going through adding up these little strips. It'll work for a while because I've got top take away bottom, top take away bottom, top take away, we'll give them the heights until I get there. And then it switches to a different formula. You'd have to do it in two halves. You'd have to work out the area of this half first and then that half second and add them together because they've got different tops and bottoms. They've got the same bottoms, they've got different formulas for the top and the bottom. Certainly it means you need to know when to stop doing this one. So that'll be at this point, I'll need that x coordinate. And then from there, when to stop doing that one. That'll be there. I'll have to find Q. So the first part of the question says quite naturally, find the values of P and Q. Well, there are curves all over the place. It's not too clear here. So I've rearranged the identifications to see which curve has got which equation. Now, P lies in two curves, so you could use either of them to find what P is. But this looks at easier form. I know the Y coordinate. Easier to put it into here than to put it into there. So <coughs> for P, for the point P, I can use, well, I'll give them names, that's equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. Using equation 2, I've got this. y equals 4, which means that, putting it into that equation, equation 2 there, 4 equals 4 over, and x was p, which means that p squared, taken across and multiplying and bring that down, is 1, which means p is 1, because p is greater than 0. The origin was here, it didn't bother drawing in the axis. The second one, for the point Q, Q1. That lies in the intersection of two curves. I could either use the 4 over x squared formula to find it, or the x squared minus a quarter of x squared. It's easier still to just use this one. So for Q, what do I know? The y coordinate is 1. To use an equation, you need to know one of the coordinates and the equation will tell you the other one. Right, so if y is 1, I put it into that formula. 1 will equal 4 over x squared. So x, sorry, q, q squared. So bring the q up, q squared equals 4. So q will be the square root of 4, but it's a positive value here. I know that q is greater than 0. So there's the first part. Where do I stop integrating with this top? And then, where do I stop integrating? With this top. So now it's just a case of work out the two areas separately. So for part B, if I've got room to try and squeeze it in here, make it out. The area on the left. I'm going to start at zero and keep adding it up until I hit that point at the top, which happens at one. So I sweep through the area from zero to one, and I'll have to stop there because it switches to a different formula after that of the tops are given by this expression. The tops are given by, I'll just multiply it out while I'm there, x squared plus 3x. The bottoms are given by this expression. A quarter x minus a quarter x squared dx. That gives the height of each strip. The coordinate of the top, the y coordinate of the top, the y coordinate of the bottom, that's the height of the strip. The thickness of the strip, just these wee tiny dx's and then gather them all up from 0 to 1. Now I'll need to tidy this expression up then, so what have I got all together? I've got a 3x, I've got 2x and 3 quarters left. No, sorry, take away 1, 5 quarters of x squared. And then it's just not having time to work it all out. <coughs> so it's up to 2, divide by 2, up to 3, divide by 3, that's a bit nastier. 
or go to out at 0 and 1. Well, the 0 is very handy because that's just going to disappear. So I'm just going to have 1 squared, and 1's are very handy. 1 to the power of anything is just 1, plus 5 twelfths times 1 cubed, minus, I'll just put 0 in there. So that's just going to give me 1 and 5 twelfths. I'll leave it as a mixed number. So the area on the left is 1 and 5 twelfths. Same for the area on the right. Now that I've swept up those little rectangles, I'll now sweep up the remaining ones on the right-hand side. I'll need to so the right-hand area is going to be starting at 1 and sweeping up these little rectangles until you get to 2. So from 1 to 2, or straight away, that's more of a pest. I know I'm going to have to do a double evaluation. Of the top, which is 4 minus x, sorry, 4 over x squared, so I'll have to write that as 4x to the negative 2. Take away the bottom formula, <coughs> that's this one here. Take away x minus a quarter x squared. Yes, this is altogether a, a much nastier wee beastie. So that just tidying that up, I've got a quarter of x squared minus of x plus um, 4x to the negative 2 dx. Oh, well, it's all ready to go now anyway. So up to 3, divide by 3, so that'll be a 12. Up to 2, divide by 2. Up to negative 1, divide by negative 1. So I'll make that a minus 4. Work it out at 1, work it out at 2. Well, at least working out at 1 is not bad, because 1 to the end of things is just 1. So working it out at 2, though. So I've got 1 twelfth of 2 cubed minus a half of 2 squared minus 4 <coughs> times. Now, negative 1 means 1 over 2. Take away oh, a twelfth of 1 cubed minus a half of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 over 1. Let's sort of get in there. Then, so what's this lot then? So I've got 8 twelfths. So that's 2 thirds. I've got half of 4. So that's 2. I've got, again, a half of 4. So that's another 2. This side, I've got a twelfth. I've got a half, and I've got four, so that, well I keep the whole number separately, well look, look, I've got minus four, and I've got a plus four, so they'll cancel out, so I've just got this two thirds, minus that twelfth, but plus a half, I'll just add that all up into twelfths then, so for the twelfths I've got eight minus one plus six, so that's going to give me seven and six, thirteen twelfths, or to make it the same as the other one, one and one twelfth square units. That was 1 and 5 twelfths, that was 1 and 1 twelfths. So finally the area is going to be, the left hand side was 1 and 5 twelfths, the right hand side was 1 and 1 twelfths, 1 and 1 makes 2, oh, you say that even in the higher, 1 and 1 makes 2 and 5 and 1 makes 6 twelfths which is a half, so you've got 2 and a half square units.